Okay, thank you. I'm going to change gears here a little bit. It's my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. <laughs> no, not Pelosi. <laughs> That's good. I first met Patrick one year ago today here at Kellogg Park. After watching all the fun we were having up on stage, Patrick and his wife Angie decided to join our tea party group. I have since come, come to know them very well. Patrick and Angie are two of the finest people I have ever met. They invest incredible energy in their community, their charities, and their church. They have hearts of gold, and I am honored to call them friends. Now the good news is that Patrick has decided to run for State Senate in District 7. Yeah! Now given Patrick's respect for the U.S. Constitution, his character, integrity, work ethic, and intelligence, he is an outstanding candidate for State Senate. He is a natural leader and a man committed to restoring the greatness of Michigan and our country. Please give a hearty Tea Party welcome to Patrick Kolbeck. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jim. Happy birthday, Tea Party! I think it's safe to say that the silent majority is silent no more. You know, it was a little over a year ago that our, our friend Denise sent my wife Angie and I an email. And uh, the email stated simply, a friend told me that a tea party was going to be held in Kellogg Park on Wednesday from 3 to 5 p.m. Thaddeus McCotter is one of the scheduled speakers. Now, my wife and I are enthusiastic supporters of my fellow CC alum, Thaddeus, so uh, we decided to check it out. We were uh, very dismayed at the corruption in Washington, D.C., so we decided uh, to attend our first political rally here with a sign that said simply, uh, the people are broke, the Constitution isn't. Now, we, we made the rookie mistake of only writing on one side of the, of the poster here, and we only had four staples, and in the wind like today here, that doesn't last very long, um, but we had a sign. Um, on April 15th, we parked our car over there behind Campari's there and uh, kind of sheepishly uh, walked up here to the uh, uh, Kellogg Park, not knowing really what to expect. And um, we uh, settled down finally right around over there and uh, um, just uh, started talking with some of the folks around us. There were flags waving, the Skinny Raccoons band was playing the uh, song from uh, Schoolhouse Rock called We the People. Uh, which I grew up with as a kid. I don't seem to see that on the airwaves anymore. And I'd love to see it. We were surrounded by veterans. We were surrounded by parents. We were surrounded by grandparents, kids. We were surrounded by people from all walks of life. We knew that we were among friends. Now during that first tea party, my friend Jim here gave a, a, a memorable speech that I kind of liken to the Declaration of Independence for the Tea Party movement. In his speech, he eloquently outlined the reason for our discontent. In a nutshell, it was out of control spending. We were just on the heels of TARP 1, TARP 2 stimulus bill, and a very plush on the bus spending bill that was bankrupting our country. It turns out that one of the folks that Angie and I were talking with in the crowd was Jim's wife, Audrey. Our conversation developed into a friendship, as Jim alluded to in his introduction, and resulted in our involvement in the steering, uh, the, uh, steering committee for the Rattle With Us party. Um, I, uh, Marco, I, uh, Angie and I decided to go to our first uh, steering committee uh, meeting back in, I think it was in May, and um, met a lot of folks. We didn't really know what to expect. We'd never gotten engaged in politics like that before, besides getting out to the polling booths and voting here. and. And, uh, and supporting our political candidates. But uh, when we got there, we were, we were uh, amongst uh, Marco and Sharon. We were amongst Mary Beth and her husband Jim and their kids. Uh, Jim and Audrey brought their kids. Uh, Kim was there. Uh, our friends Andy and Deb were there as well. Um, what the media and, and uh, government officials would later label as astroturf, racists, and uh, terrorists uh, were simply common folk. You know, they were veterans. They were project managers, 
They're homeschoolers, they're doctors, they're software engineers, small business owners, uh, automotive engineers, and churchgoers. You know, the poster children for modern day radicals. <laughs> Within a minute, we felt like we had known them for years. We are now proud to call these radicals our friends, along with many other fellow rattlers who picked up the charge since that first meeting. As the nation's headlines went from bad to worse, I started doing some strange things like reading instead of watching TV. Probably as a result of my engineering background, I wanted to know how our country was actually designed to work. I read many documents from our founding fathers, including the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution. You know, I even read the Michigan Constitution several times. I was and still am very hungry for trustworthy information. I even found myself reading that old health care bill. Last August I shared what I discovered in a speech right here in Kellogg Park. I was disgusted by the deliberate attempts of our, by our politicians to mislead the American public in regards to the content of this bill. Through my reading I started to find new sources that I could trust and those that I couldn't trust. I joined other Tea Partiers to protest the quality of reporting in a local news station. I was dismayed that they were not accurately informing their viewers on such monumental legislation such as the health care quote unquote reform bill. I even found myself taking on the role of reporter and interviewing tea partiers at our July 4th rally last year with a microphone and my friend Matt in tow. It is through my attendance at these tea party events that I have learned many of the details about the issues of the day. Wonderful speakers such as Dr. David Janda, Reverend Yule, Representative McCotter, and uh, um, even Theron X of WHAM 1600 here has shared their insights and expertise with a growing number of very educated citizens. The more that I learn, the more that I realize that this cancer called big government wasn't limited to the federal government. It afflicted our state government as well. We currently have a $1.5 billion deficit despite a constitutional mandate that we don't spend more than we take in. Overall, it's not a very good state of affairs at the state level either. So folks, what are we going to do about it? For far too long we've been silently going about our daily lives trusting that the majority of our representatives were actually representing us. With a few notable exceptions, this has simply not been the case. Tea parties are now holding these representatives accountable. How are we holding them accountable? We're holding them accountable with our vote. 